first reading today is from Deuteronomy, verses, the fifth verse and six chapters following. Moses convened all Israel and said to them, Hear, O Israel, the statutes and ordinance that I am addressing to you today, you shall learn them and observe them diligently. The Lord your God made, made a covenant with us at Horeb. Not with our ancestors did the Lord make the covenant, but with us, who are all here alive today. The Lord spoke with you face to face at the mountain, out of the fire. At that time I was standing between the Lord and you to declare to you the words of the Lord. For you were afraid because of the fire and did not go up the mountain. And he said, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven or above, or that is on the earth beneath, or what is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children and in the inequities of parents to the third and fourth generation for those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Observe the Sabbath day and keep it holy, for the Lord your God commanded you, for six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath to your Lord God. You shall not do any work, you, sh you or your son or your daughter or your male or female slave or your ox or donkey or any of your livestock or the resident alien in your towns so that your male and female slave may rest as well as you. Remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt and the Lord your God brought you out from there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. Honor your father and your mother as the Lord your God commanded you, so that your days may be long and that it may go well with you in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder, neither shall you commit adultery, neither shall you steal, neither shall you bear false witness against your neighbor. Neither shall you covet your neighbor's wife, neither shall you desire your neighbor's house, or field, or male, field slave, or ox, or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is your, our God, the Lord alone. You shall live the Lord, with, the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your might. Keep these words that I am commanding you today in your heart. Recite them to your children and talk about them when you are at home and when you are away, when you lie down and when you rise. Bind them as a sign of your hand, fix them as an emblem of your forehead, and write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Gospel reading according to Matthew, the 22nd chapter. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the laws and the prophets. The gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God and our Savior Jesus. Welcome to our fifth week of our series, Biblical and Everyday Heroes. In the simplest term, a hero is one who will fight for the good of all. We've looked at Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, and today Moses. Each of these biblical heroes demonstrate traits for us to embody as everyday heroes. Humility and sacrifice. Perseverance, seeking the greater good. And in Moses, well, where do we begin? The scenario that Moses enters into is found in the opening verses of the book of Exodus. The Israelites had settled in Egypt about 400 years earlier when Joseph, the son of Jacob, grandson of Isaac, great-grandson of Abraham, 
through some very horrendous and strange and miraculous circumstances, ultimately became second in command, welcoming his brothers and fathers into Egypt to survive a great famine. Over time, Joseph and his rulers died, and the arrangement agreed upon was forgotten. The Egyptian rulers turned these welcome guests into slaves, yet they continued to be fruitful and multiplied. The Egyptian rulers feared that the growing Hebrew population could revolt against them. The Pharaoh ordered a terrible punishment. All firstborn male babies of the Hebrew people were to be killed. Moses' mother sought to save her son, and she wrapped him in cloth, put him in a basket, and it is Pharaoh's daughter who finds him and raises him as her own. Moses grew in years, and now a young man, Moses saw an Egyptian soldier beating a Hebrew slave. And Moses intervened and ended up killing the soldier. The next day, Moses returned and saw two Hebrew men fighting each other. And he said, why are you hitting one of your own people? And one of the men answered, foreshadowing, who made you our ruler and judge? Are you going to kill me as you killed the Egyptian? The news reached Pharaoh, and he tried to kill Moses, but Moses escaped into the wilderness. It is there he had his encounter with God in the burning bush, who told Moses, you must return to Egypt and save the Hebrews. For some debate, after some debate, Moses returned to Egypt to tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Pharaoh laughed at such a request. But after many plagues, the final, final culminated with the firstborn male person or animal in all of Egypt killed during the night. However, God told Moses to order the Hebrew families to sacrifice a lamb and smear the blood on the door of their houses. In this way, the angel would know to pass over their houses. This is why the festival commemorating the escape from Egypt is known as the Passover. The Egyptians were devastated by the deaths of their sons and urged the Israelites to leave hastily before any more people died. However, as they were leaving, Pharaoh realized his economic engine was departing as well and chased after the Hebrews. The Hebrews were trapped on the shore of the Red Sea with the Egyptian army coming. Moses lifted up his rod and the sea parted, allowing the Hebrews to walk on dry land across safely. The Egyptian army tried to follow, but now, on the other side, Moses let down his staff and the water rushed over the Egyptians. And now, they, like their ancestors, began their journey. For the Lord had said to Abram, Leave your country, your people, and the house of your father, and go to the land which I will lead you. Then the Lord came to Jacob, saying, Go down to Egypt. Do not be afraid, for I am with you, and will make you a great nation. Then the Lord said to Moses, Leave this place, you and the people you brought out of Egypt, and go up to the land I promised, an oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying, I will give you Give to your descendants. Go up to the land flowing with milk and honey. But the Lord added, I will not go with you. For the Lord said to Moses, Tell the Israelites, You are a stiff-necked people. If I were to go with you, even for a moment, I might destroy you. Moses challenged God, saying, Remember that this nation is your people. And the Lord relented and replied, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. So the Lord led the Hebrews into the desert, wandering to find the promised land, and it, and during that, it is during that time that the commandments are given. Just as a loving parent lays down ground rules for his child to follow, to lead a safe and successful life, God the Father gave the commandments to help us lead our best lives with God and with each other. Many people hear these as rules with penalties, but that's more of the book of Leviticus. Worse, if you try to strictly enforce these rules 
and make the foolish attempt to demand others to follow them, you have failed miserably. Depending on how you number the commandments, the introduction or first commandment is the key. Deuteronomy 5, 6. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. What are the other gods we put before God? Money? Time? Our own desires? I would argue it is simply ourselves. We take on the God role expecting people to live the way we want them to live. Well, what does that do? God says, I brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. When we force our beliefs and our opinions, our attitude, and demand people to act as we desire to make, we are in essence putting them into bondage and slavery. We need to allow God to be God. We will pray later in worship the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What we pray is often not what we do. Instead, the prayer would be more accurately said in this manner. God in heaven, hallowed be my name. My kingdom come. My will be done on earth. And those who follow can go to heaven. Our Old Testament reading ended with the Shema, which is still today serves as a centerpiece of the morning and evening Jewish prayer. Let me read it again, and in doing so, note what is not said. It says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your might. Keep these words in your heart, Recite them to your children. Bind them as a sign on your hand, on your forehead, on the doorposts of your house, and on your gates. This is a relationship between us and God. And we allow others to see us in that relationship, not demand that they conform to it. Where we get into trouble is when we demand these for others. Yes, Jesus tells us as Christians to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. Teach to obey is not to demand or manipulate or force. Jesus in our gospel reading replies to the religious leaders of his time when asked which commandment in the law is the greatest, Jesus said, The Shema, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest in the first commandment. Then he added, a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. On these two, two commandments hang all the laws and the prophets. Like Moses, we are called to lead, but not force. And there will not be immediate or unwavering acceptance when we invite others because we are a stiff-necked people. From Adam and Eve to the religious leaders of Jesus' time to us today and to those who will follow, the journey will continue as we seek the promised land. But it's a journey each person is invited to take. Remember, Jesus is the good shepherd and not the bad rancher. Follow me, he says. Let us be people who follow his ways of acceptance, forgiveness, and love for all people, loving our neighbors as we love ourselves. We look at all the conflicts in the world today, bloodshed in the Holy Lands, because people live with the belief of the my kingdom come and my will be done on earth. And in doing so, we bring hell. The news of the conflict of Israel and Jordan, Hamas, was the first thing I heard leaving the initial retreat of faith practices and neighboring practices, a new initiative funded by a Lilly Grant. May we, like our ancestors, take this two-year journey to learn how to listen to our neighbor, discovering their God-given gifts and talents, learning from them to see how God is already at work in our community. Let us not be stiff-necked people and change our prayer into... Dear Lord, please bless what I want to instead, Dear Lord, 
Please allow me to be part of what you are already blessing. With me at the retreat were six other members, the youngest being Maverick, just a few months old. His mom, Kelsey, and dad, Ian, are everyday heroes among us. And they will give us the last word this morning of what we, as St. Luke's, are to do and be as people of God. St. Luke's is special to me because it's something that is larger than just myself. It is something that's larger than our family. It has given us another home to be able to not only grow our faith, but to create these amazing relationships with one another. And it has truly impacted us as a family. She did a really good job on that. 